Okay, let's solve this algebra word problem. That's everyone's favorite topic. I know that on the weekends, people are like, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to watch a football game? You know, maybe you're going to go to the park, hang out with your friends. You know, a lot of people are like, no, I'm going to do word problems, algebra word problems, because they're awesome. And they are awesome. Of course, many of you are like, wait, word problems, you're like, you know, like this. You're, you're like, I don't want to do word problems. Just give me the nice, basic, easy stuff. Well, unfortunately, in mathematics, there are word problems. And word problems are an application of the skills that you are learning. But there's no reason to fear word problems. I know that they're scary and whatnot, but what we have to do is reduce that fear. And the way you reduce that fear of word problems is one, you got to build up your skills. Okay. And then two, you have to have, you know, the basic kind of guidelines. You got to have some general guidelines on how to approach word problems. And then obviously you have to practice word problems, okay? And uh, if you don't practice word problems, you're not going to get better at them. So we're going to take a look at this classic algebra word problem. It's an age word problem, and uh, I'm sure I did this word, this flavor of word problem way back in the good old 19. 80s when I was in high school, not paying attention, not doing what I was supposed to do, but I'm sure my teacher was trying to get me to understand this stuff. And then even your, uh, my grandparents probably were even doing this. Hey, you know, this is a kind of, a, again, in algebra, the, the word problems that you study are, you know, they, 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 they've been taught for years and years and years and years. So as you understand these, uh, these general type of word problems, age word problems are kind of classic, then you should be pretty good to go on your test. So no need to be afraid. We're going to race this guy here. But let's um, get into how um, we approach a word problem. And then obviously I'm going to solve this word problem here in a second. So I'm going to talk about all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. That's a pretty bold statement, but I really truly believe I have uh, created an awesome program. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the uh, main courses that uh, people take in middle and high school, like pre algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. Going to be launching uh, pre calculus here soon. Also, I like college algebra. I have all those kind of uh, main courses, but I have many, many, many specialty courses, a lot in test preparations. For So for those of you that are studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, teacher certification, nursing entrance exam, ASVAB, you know, college placement, uh, you know, end of course exams, there's a ton of of uh, really important tests that people take in their lives that a lot of, you know, lots right on it. Let's take, for example, a teacher certification exam. There's a lot of math on it. If you don't, you know, pass that test, uh, the math section of it, you don't get your certification. You can't be employed as a teacher. So, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people study math and, uh, that are outside of a math course. So I recognize that. And I have excellent uh, test preparation courses. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system. So if uh, you are homeschooling, I could certainly help you out. And then obviously for those of you who are struggling in your course, let's say you're taking algebra and you just need additional help, uh, I can definitely help you out as well. Now, the one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out is taking great math notes, okay? This is my golden rule of math over decades of teaching the topic is um, those students who take great math notes almost always end up with excellent math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who don't take math notes, maybe they're just like not into them. You know, math notes, they're not cool. You know, like, yeah, they're not necessary because I could just listen to the teacher, check in from time to time. I got a photographic memory. And plus my best buddy in the back of the class has better notes than I. So I just go ahead and just look at their notes. Listen, that's not going to work. Okay. I'm telling you right now, you have to remain focused and engaged when the teacher is teaching math. Okay. That's even if you're learning online, it doesn't make a difference. If you're distracted, you're not going to learn. Now, you know, I was a student once and uh, I know what, it, uh, what it's like to be distracted because I was distracted. But if you're going to learn math, there's only one way to really learn it. And that is to remain engaged and focused. If not, you're going to be doing this up and down business. You know, sometimes you're learning, sometimes you're not. And this is just going to lead 
uh, to a unhappy situation at the end of the year. Okay, because math builds upon itself. You can't be learning math sometimes and oh yeah, you know, not yeah. And I, it's work to stay focused. Okay, so your note taking is evidence that you are remaining focused, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So improve in your note taking. Most of you. Uh, need to do this. Now, in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. Find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so here is our word problem. Let's go ahead and read it real quick. Beth is eight years older than her brother. Next year, she'll be twice as old as her brother. How old is Beth now? Okay, so how do we approach a word problem? Well, first thing we need to do is read it. Now, uh, a lot of you are out there saying, okay, Mr. YouTube uh, guy, you know, I didn't watch your video just to, you know, have you tell me to read the prompt. But no, I'm telling you right now, most students read the prompt one time and then they just start working on the prompt. No, that's not enough. You're going to have to read this problem like probably four times, okay? So the first time you read it, just get a flavor of what's going on, okay? You're like, all right, read the problem, and then focus in on the question mark. Here's the question mark, and then back up, because now we can identify what's being asked, okay? What's being asked of us here? How old is Beth now, okay? So we have Beth and her brother, and the question is, how old is Beth now? So that is what you have to focus in on, because... Um, you want to answer the specific question being asked. A lot of times, a stu you know, students will read a problem, they'll get totally immersed, excited, and they'll start doing a bunch of math, and then they'll have a solution, but they forgot to answer the specific question. Okay, so we're going to read the question, get a flavor for what's being asked. Got it? Now, what's the next thing we need to do? Well, oftentimes, it's uh, excellent to have some sort of of um, kind of sketch, right? Either a figure, if it's like a geometric situation, or some sort of model, all right? Something uh, that helps us kind of understand the situation here a little bit better. It could be like a, a chart table, uh, a graph, you know, anything. But, you know, kind of try to put some sort of visual, um, you know, model on what's going on, right? That's very, very useful. Okay, the next thing that we're going to want to do is establish variables, okay? We have to assign variables, okay? What's being asked here, we're going to have to pick a variable like x, okay? And we're going to say, okay, what's x going to be equal to? Because uh, what we're going to be doing here, because we are talking about algebra, we have variables, okay? We have to read this. We got this information. We have some sort of model. We're going to have to build some sort of equation, all right? Some sort of equation using the information and the variables, then we're going to have to solve the equation. Okay, we have to solve this equation. And then last but not least, we're going to have to answer the right question. Okay, so just because you solve the equation doesn't necessarily mean that you've answered the question. Okay, so we're going to see that here in this particular problem. So um, the only way you're going to be able to do this is to continue to read the problem, reread it and you know just really be fully immersed immersed in uh, what's going on so this is the kind of general guidelines to all algebra word problems and all word problems in mathematics uh, for the most part obviously in uh, some courses you know like basic math you, you haven't learned yet how to solve equations but these are kind of the general uh, procedure or uh, uh, the way we want to approach were problems. Okay, so now with all that being said, if you think you can do it on your own, you should. I would definitely encourage you to pause the video and try to see how you would start this problem. You don't even have to solve it perfectly. Just think about it and see what you can kind of do. At least try to set up the problem because I'm going to do it, and you're going to be like, "Oh, that was easy." Remember, watching someone do math is not the same as learning math, okay? Now, I'm here to help you, obviously, but you should always try to challenge yourself to do this stuff on your own. Okay, so let's get to the problem. All right, so obviously I kind of uh, already did this in advance, and here we go. So Beth is eight years older than her brother, okay? So Beth, all right, is currently eight years older than her brother. So we got Beth and her brother, okay? Next year... Next year, she'll be twice as old as her brother. How old is Beth now? Okay, so we're talking about next year, right? So let's go back here and reread the problem. We've got next year. We're not talking about next year, right? They want to know how old is she right now, okay? So right now, 
Beth is eight years older than her brother currently. Okay. Next year, she's going to be twice as old as her brother. But remember, how old is Beth now? Well, we need to uh, focus in on her present age, not her next year, next year's age. So here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the variable x. And this is where you really like to kind of play around with uh, uh, this type of prom. But we need to kind of get a baseline. So Beth is eight years older than her brother. Well, let's let's pick a variable. We don't know her brother's age. We don't know her age. Let's just say her uh, her brother is X years old right now. Okay. So we're going to let X equal her brother's age currently right now. Okay. So with that being uh, stated, we can determine if I knew her brother's age right now, I know she's eight years older than whatever her brother's age. So if I get this X, I can definitely determine her current age, Beth's uh, current age. Got to just add eight years onto her brother's age. So uh, now when you're dealing with an age word problem or any kind of algebra word problem, it's very, very useful to organize um, the situation in a nice table. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this table. This is a very um, classic kind of setup to solve these problems. So once you understand this kind of setup, you can use tables in algebra to solve these word problems. So let's take a look at the information. We have her, uh, the brother, and we have Beth. Okay, so brother and her Beth. And we have two kind of time frames. We have now, their ages right now, and then we have their ages next year. So remember, we decided to let X equal to her brother's age right now. So let's go ahead and fill out this table. So your, the brother's age right now is X, okay? And we know right now, Beth is eight years older than her brother. So whatever her brother's age is, it's X, right? Plus eight, that's Beth's age right now. Okay, so this is the current situation. So you gotta start someplace. We started with X and Beth would be X plus eight. All right, now let's talk about next year. All right, so this is one year from now. Okay, how old is her brother gonna be? Well, whatever her, his age is, we're gonna add on one year. So their age next year, the brother's gonna be X plus one, okay? And Beth will be, uh, she's currently right now X plus eight, but next year she's gonna be X plus eight plus one, okay? She's, they're, both of them are gonna be one year older. So uh, based upon this, we have um, some good algebra expressions for um, right now, okay? Their situation right now, their ages right now, and their ages next year. We, and we have these all in terms of our variable x okay all right so now we can go back and reread the problem remember you know these things that i'm telling you uh you know i'm not making this up you know when i see like read the problem read the problem read the problem that's what i mean reread the problem all right so now uh let's go back and reread this part next year we're going to need this part right here we need to build an equation is what i'm getting at all right we need to build an equation we have a nice table but we need some sort of relationship so right in this part of the problem, he says next year she will be twice as old as her brother. So we got to bring this part of the problem in this this fact to help us solve uh, to help us establish an equation. So next year she will be twice as old as her brother. So we can use this table here to build an equation. So next year Beth. Okay, so here's Beth right here. Uh, so her her, ne her her age next year is going to be what? X plus eight plus one. We already determined that. Okay, so this is Beth next year, her age, and her brother's age next year is going to be X plus one. Okay, but she is going to be, whatever her age is, it's going to be twice her brother's age. So next year, her, her brother will be X plus one. Okay, so whatever his age, we multiply by two. Okay, that's what her age is going to be next year. So really make sure you understand this uh, relationship. Okay, so next year, Beth is going to be um, X plus 8 plus 1, but she's also going to be twice her brother's age. So we can set up this equation. This is very, very important. And this is, uh, you know, pretty, you know, hopefully easier to determine once we have our nice table here. Okay. All right. So now... We have to solve for x. We finally got ourselves a nice equation involving x, and now this requires 
your ability to solve basic equations. Again, um, when I talked about word problems, you need to have skills, okay? Then we apply those skills in an application to solve a word problem. So oftentimes you're not going to be able to solve a word problem if you don't have the basic skills that you're studying. So the step, you know, what you're studying right here is, um, you know, how to solve linear equations. Okay, that's uh, generally, you know, the kind of the topic, algebra skills, if you will, solving equations. So at this point, hopefully, most of you can solve this equation. Now, if you if you can't solve this equation, then you're really going really to be struggling with the word problem uh, like this. So what do you do if, you, if you're struggling solving this equation? Well, you've got to have to go back and review how to solve linear equations. Okay? Don't continue to struggle with the word problem. It's not going to make any sense because you need to up your skills with equations. So go back and review, strengthen, and then come back to this problem. But let's go ahead and walk through the equation. So we have x plus 8 plus 1 is equal to 2x, uh, or equal to 2 times x plus 1. So uh, we have x plus 8 plus 1. That's going to be the same as x plus 9. And then here, I can use the distributive property. Okay, so 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, so that's where we're at. And now let's go ahead and... Um, we don't have any alike terms on either side of the equations. Remember, when we're solving equations, we want the variables on the left and the numbers on the right. So I'm going to start moving over uh, the number here I have on the left-hand side. That's 9. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. That's what I'm doing right here. So I get x is equal to 2x minus 7. So be careful with your positive and negative numbers. Now, notice how I'm showing you all the work, okay? Do you think you want to be doing the same thing when you turn in your uh, test or quiz or your homework? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Do not do your homework in a sloppy manner. Don't be like, duh, 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 duh. because what you're doing is it's, uh, in, uh, you're practicing bad habits, right? So my, you know, philosophy is I'd rather you not do math at all. If you're not going to do math the right way, don't do it at all. Because if you're going to practice it in a poor manner, then all you're doing is instilling bad habits, okay? You want to be neat, clear, and structured, show your work one step at a time. Okay, so now we have x equals 2x minus 7. i got to move that 7 over to the other side. Uh, I'm sorry, um, excuse me, not the 7 over. The 7 is perfectly fine. i got to move the x over. So I'm just subtracting now negative uh, 2x from the other side. Now, if you're, again, not quite understanding what I'm doing here, then you got to go back and watch my videos on solving equations in my algebra Playlist. Okay, so we end up with negative x is equal to negative 7, and that is equivalent to x is equal to 7. So at this point, a lot of you would be so excited. You'd be like, I am so awesome in math. Look at me. Here you go, Mr. Teacher. X is equal to 7. Uh, you know, I need my A+. plus. Can you please give my A+. Plus? And then I turn around and give you a B. And then you're like, you know, you're like, you're like this. You know, you're like, hey, what's going on here? Well, this is not answering the question, okay? I know you're excited and whatnot, and yeah, maybe I would give you a B plus. I'd be like, listen, listen, what is X equal to? Well, remember, X was equal to the brother's age now, okay? So the brother is seven. But the question, remember, what was the question? All right, let's go all the way up. The question is, how old is Beth now? That's what the question's asking, not... The brother's age. We need the brother's age, but the question is, how old is Beth now? Okay, so remember, everything I'm telling you comes from long years of experience teaching. Okay, so how old is Beth now? Well, I know her. Her the brother is seven, so seven plus eight. Okay, if that's uh, uh, the brother's age currently, Beth is 15 years old. Okay, so. You know, small little details are, are the difference between a B and an A, all right, or a D and an F, okay? Uh, math is made up with all these little things, okay? And the worst thing to that a teacher hears, okay, and I, I say it, I even say it now, but we want to stay away from this phrase, I knew that, I knew that, I knew that, I knew that, okay? I probably have heard that. 562,000 times over the decades of teaching math. I knew that. I knew that, Mr. Teacher. Listen, yeah, I know I gave you X equals 7, but I knew that she was 15. Listen, you know, you don't want to be like this sad person. If you knew that, you got to, like, do that, okay? And why would that happen? Well, someone could, 
someone can give you the uh, the wrong answer because they're not remaining focused. Math is a game of focus, okay, commitment, dedication, all right? And that's why a lot of people, I think, struggle with it because they're just like, yeah, you know, I kind of like learn it, not learn it, not learn it, you know, or whatever. You can't learn math that way. So if you're struggling in math, you got to really, you know, um, you know, be honest with yourself. But I'm here to tell you, absolutely, you can be uh, great at math. Everyone could be, everyone could do excellent in mathematics. Of course, we all have our own natural, you know, aptitudes and and whatnot. And some of you are are going to go much further in math than others. But for this level of math, I tell you, it's been my experience that almost, you know, almost. I mean, I mean, and I'm not trying to be you know, I exaggerate here, just about everyone can do very, very, very well in math. So if you're struggling in math, then, you know, you're going to have to change your change up your situation. OK, one, take a look at your notes Two, find a teacher that you like and understand. So if you're teaching, you're not connected with the teacher and you like my teaching you know, style, then, you know, you know where to go to get help. All right. So if you like this video, if this really cleared up uh, some stuff for you and helped you out with word problems, please consider smashing that like button. That would help me out. And please consider uh, subscribing to my channel. I've been on YouTube for a long time, 10 plus years, have uh, many, many, many videos organized from basic to advanced math on my channel, all there for you. And kind of posting uh, stuff all the time. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time. And have a great day.